hello, hello. It's been a long time since I've shot a mobile video. Let me fix my shirt so I don't look so schmuggy. Off to Majestic Star, Maristar Casinos in East Chicago, Gary, Indiana. We're going to play some smaller tournaments at Majestic Star Casino. We're going to stay overnight at Ameristar, which, do I have that right? Yeah, one of the hotels is nice. I'm going to stay at the nicer hotel. <laughs> at Ameristar, yeah. And then the casinos, are the, the tournaments are at Majestic Star. We're right next to each other. So we're going to play in a tournament tonight and tomorrow. And, you know, we want to win first place. We've had, over the last six months, I've had a fifth place finish, a seventh place finish, a couple ninth place finishes, a couple tenth place finishes. <laughs> um, I've yet to break the top four over the last uh, six months or so. Um, so, you know, I've done well. I'm about even for the year. Just neither good or bad, you know, that's better than down. So, very excited about it. Ready to kick some ass. I'm going to start out very aggressive style when the blinds are small and be raising when I'm in position no matter what I have. And that's a key to my new game strategy. If I'm in position, late position, I'm going to be raising pre flop with anything and everything. Unless there's a big, huge raise in front of me. But if people are flat calling in front of me, I'm raising no matter what I have. During those first few rounds, during those first few rounds, you want to get some extra chips. A lot of people are going to come out of the chute playing conservative, just kind of laid back, mellow, getting relaxed, kind of getting in their mode. I don't want you playing that way. I want you coming out firing on all cylinders. Make it known at the table. Hopefully put a little bit of fear in people's minds that, oh, this guy's a crazy guy. You know, he just keeps raising, raising, raising. One of the things that that achieves is when you do wake up with a really good hand, pre-flop, and you just raise like you have been raising, those other players at the table just think you have nothing because of what you had done previously. They're like, oh, here he goes again, just raising with air. Meanwhile, you're sitting there with pocket jacks or pocket kings or ace king. On the note of ace king, we are going to slow play that today. We're not going to jam it. We're going to treat it like it's uh, ace 10 or ace jack. I don't want you getting too excited with ace king. Now, if your ace king is suited and you got some all in in front of you that's a lower stack, obviously jam it. If your ace king is suited and you're at a final table, fucking jam that shit. You get my point. But in these early rounds, don't get too excited with ace king, okay? It's not a pair. It's not kings, it's not jacks, it's not tens. It's a non-pair, so be very careful with it. You can maybe do a little raise pre-flop if you want. Don't go crazy with it. Um, so I'll give a little check back here uh, when I have more to videotape. Wish me luck. Jamming it, rock and roll. All right, well, here's how I did in the tournaments that I just talked about. We played a, a Friday evening tournament that was a $130 buy-in. Unfortunately, it was only a 36 players, so only the top three got paid. Uh, I played incredible. I played aggressive. I played in the way that I mentioned at the beginning of this video, very tactfully. And sure enough, within a good half hour to 45 minutes, people feared me and they were less hesitant to call my raise, especially when I started to win some hands. I got a set within the first hour, I got a straight within the second hour, and I'm raising, raising, raising pre-flop in position while the blinds are low. When I say low, I'm talking 
50 bucks, 100 bucks, 150, $200 in that range, you know, for several levels. It is a time in the early part of a tournament where you need to be aggressive. You need to pay less attention to your cards and more on conveying a message at the table of aggression and intimidation and letting them know just by your body language and by your actions, not by your mouth, but by your body language and your actions and your betting patterns and your raising and whether you're giving the impression of you're fishing or not. Um, and well, at the same time, being very polite and friendly with other players at the table. You're not being a dick, but you're obviously have a strategy and one goal, which is to win the tournament. You're not there to finish just outside the cash pool or whatever it may be. You know, if people want to come out and play casually, then that, that's prerogative. And they can play any which way they want. They can play super tight the entire time and sit there waiting for, for pocket pairs and ace king. All right, well, good. Go ahead. You'll play a couple hands per hour. Good luck with that strategy. <laughs> um, can that strategy work sometimes? Yes, it can. And I used to play that way, and I have done okay playing that way. But that's not the best way to go about it in the long run because you're just never going to build a huge chip stack. You've got to be bluffing. You've got to be incorporating aggression and bluffs into your hands. I'll give you a great example on a hand at one point. Um, I raised pre-flop with with like seven four suited in late position. Nobody had raised me bef nobody had raised before me. So when it came to me, the button around me, nobody's raising. Well hell, I'm gonna raise. I don't care what I have, I'm gonna raise. And the flop came nothing. I didn't really get anything. It was like Jack King uh ace. No Jack King Queen. No Jack King ten. So it's like obviously straight, you know, very wet board. And because it's a wet board, I use that to my advantage to immediately keep raising after the flop um, to give the impression to the player next to me who's calling my raises uh, that I have an ace. I don't know what he had. And when the turn came and it was a king, I pretended that I had an ace. Regardless if he had a, a pair of queens or a pair of kings, I pretended I had the ace to get that ace eye straight. So I aggressively re-raised him again um, upon the river, which was like nothing. It was like a five on the river. So on the board, you've got a 10, a jack, a queen, and a king. So I'm going to play it like I have that ace. And I stared him down, and I checked my cards, did a little bit of Hollywood there, and then I put out an aggressive bet, and he folded. I won that hand with 7-4 suited. All right, it's a great example early in the tournament. Earlier in the tournament, I picked up like... Two to three thousand in chips on that hand early in the tournament. This tournament only started out with six thousand chips. Um, so the fast forward here, I finished in fourth place out of thirty-six players, and the prize pool started out at first three players. So I was the bubble. <laughs> but you know, I'll tell you the reason why. Uh, me and the other villain, we both flopped two pair, and she had the better top pair. So when that shit happens, we're both shoving. It's kind of unavoidable. Yeah, I could have folded for the prize pool, but I'm there to win it, and I'm not there to slow roll. Uh, and then the second tournament on Saturday, I finished in sixth place, and the prize pool was the top four players. Again, I just missed the prize pool, but I'm playing very aggressive. And that tournament only had 32 players. So both tournaments, not a lot of people came out. I don't know why. Maybe it's the summer months, people are busy on Friday and Saturdays with their family and the kids and the nicer weather, whatever it may be. People just didn't come out, so it's going to be hard to cash in a tournament when there's only 30-something players. It sucks. Um, but in the tournament, I finished sixth place. I did real well on that tournament, too. Everyone at the table got this impression that I was super loose you know, and I had a couple beers, and then I was just there casually to play games. Meanwhile, behind the scenes, I'm taking notes on everybody. I'm being extremely tactful and careful. I'm well-schooled in the game of poker and Texas Hold'em and these tournaments. This is my thing. So there were a couple times when I gave that impression to the table that I was super loose and just a maniac. That worked to my advantage because when it came right down to it, and I'd be sitting there with two pair, 
and raising and raising and raising. These guys think I'm bluffing or I'm just goofing around. And I won huge pots with two pair twice to a guy who was holding a pair of aces. You know, thinks his pair of aces got me killed and he keeps keeps calling my raise over and over and over. And then I just turn over, well, I got uh, two pair, queens and sixes. <laughs> and he just looked at me stunned and sat back in his chair. I took half his chips. So I hope you learned a lot from this video. Be aggressive in those first several rounds. Be raising pre-flop when you're in position, especially if nobody's raising before you. Um, hang on. And if you have any questions in the comment, please comment down below. Please like my videos. Click out, I'll check out all my other poker strategy videos, episodes one through eight or nine. I'm losing count. I think this is number nine. Um, please like, please share, please enjoy. And I'd love to get some feedback on any of my videos. I'm enjoying putting them up. I've been watching them. I've been learning from my own videos and my own experiences. I'm making a shitload of final tables. And the reason I am is because I'm deploying and employing and implementing all the strategies, everything I've learned. And a special shout out to Grips.com and Evan Jarvis at Grips.com, a great poker cyber coach. If you've never checked him out, check out his videos on YouTube and his website. They are phenomenal. Have a good day. Happy grinding. Good luck to you. Win it. Win it. Win it. Play to win. Don't play to just get the final table. Play to win. Good luck.